Welcome, siblings. Welcome to this sixth Sunday of Easter as we continue our celebration of the resurrection, as we continue to learn what it means to live as Christ's disciples on this side of the resurrection. I invite you, as always, to share with me the words that are in bold. Share them out loud the way you would in church, knowing that together, as we raise our voices, God hears our praise and our prayer. Let us call our hearts and minds to worship this day. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness, drawn into Christ's own death and resurrection, and called to live the baptized life. Let us then give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the Good Shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in our font, for the water in our homes, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The day of resurrection, earth tell it out abroad. The Passover of gladness, the Passover of God. From death to life eternal, from sin's dominion free, our Christ has brought us over with hymns of victory. Let hearts be purged of evil, that we may see aright the Lord in rays eternal of resurrection light. And listening to his accents, may hear so calm and plain his own all hail and hearing may raise the glad refrain now let the heavens be joyful let earth its song begin the round world keep high triumph and all that is therein Let all things seen and unseen their notes of gladness blend. For Christ the Lord has risen, our joy that has no end. All praise to God the Father, all praise to Christ the Son. All praise to God the Spirit, eternal three in one. Let all the ransomed number fall down before the throne, and honor, power, and glory ascribe to God alone. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. The grace of our risen Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hold together all things in heaven and on earth. In your great mercy, receive the prayers of all your children and give to all the world the spirit of your truth and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts. Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, 
Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription, To an unknown God. What therefore you worship is unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God, and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed, and of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. Word of God. Word of life. Thanks be to God. Bless our God, you peoples. Let the sound of praise be heard. Our God has kept us among the living and has not allowed our feet to slip. For you, O God, have tested us. You have tried us just as silver is tried. You brought us into the net. You laid heavy burdens upon our backs. You let people ride over our heads. We went through fire and water. But you brought us out into a place of refreshment. I will enter your house with burnt offerings and will pay you my vows those that I promised with my lips and spoke with my mouth when I was in trouble. I will offer you burnt offerings of fatlings with the smoke of rams. I will give you oxen and goats. Come and listen, all you who believe, and I will tell you what God has done for me. I called out to God with my mouth and praised the Lord with my tongue. If I had cherished evil in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. But in truth, God has heard me and has attended to the sound of my prayer. Blessed be God who has not rejected my prayer nor withheld unfailing love from me. A reading from 1 Peter. Who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear and do not be intimidated, but in your hearts sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you, yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you 
not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Baptism now saves you through the resurrection, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Baptism now saves you through the resurrection, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus says to the disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It's an interesting set of texts, and I have to say we have gotten into the interesting portion of Jesus' farewell discourse about I am in the Father, and you are in me, and I am in you, and the Spirit is coming and entering into all of us. But I actually want us to take a minute and read again from 1 Peter, our second reading today. First Peter is one of those books we get in the Easter season, and we don't often get a lot, and we don't often do a lot. In the Easter season, it's easy to focus ourselves on Jesus and the risen Christ. But there's this phrase in here that I, I haven't been able to shake this week. Peter writes, Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you, yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Again, always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you, yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Always be ready to make your defense can seem scary. What do you mean that we need to defend ourselves? Isn't that the teachings we have of what Jesus and the Spirit will do. And it's interesting that we pair this with the Spirit as advocate, the one who stands with and defends another. But I don't think that that's the part for us to focus on, but rather the second part of that. Make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Peter is writing to early Christians, and the one thing we know about the early church is that it wasn't an easy road for them. It wasn't an easy time to be a Christian. The assumption was that you weren't a Christian, and indeed, we know the early church suffered persecutions for the faith. And yet, Peter doesn't say, if you have hope or once you get hope, or make a defense of the truths you tell. No, make a defense of the hope that is in you. Peter assumes that his community has hope. It's an assumption that even in the midst of the persecutions that they were facing, that they would still have hope. And for some of the early church, that hope was in life to come facing their own martyrdoms, what does it mean that they have eternal life? Others, like Paul, think of this defense of the hope that is in you is to proclaim the risen Christ as it affects us now. And I think that's something for us to grasp onto today, something for us to grasp onto in these times. There is hope period. 
Not if, not when. There is hope to be had. There's hope to be had not just in the one who, in the fullness of time, will draw all to himself, Jesus. No, but rather that there is hope to be had even now. There is hope to be had in the community that gathers in Jesus' name. There is hope to be had when we see the work of God all around us. There is hope to be had when we see the ways that God's own gifts of science and medicine are being put to good use and trusted in these times. There is hope in the world. There is hope for us. Not for someday, not for in the hereafter, but rather there is hope for us right now. And our call is not just to grasp onto that hope, but to tell others about it, defend it, right? This, this idea of defending is, is let people know why you have hope, even when it seems hopeless. Let people know that there is hope to be had. Because we have it, and we share it with one another, and in the community that we are, in the body of Christ, we find that hope. Sometimes we don't feel it, but we're reminded of it in each other. And sometimes we have it, and someone else needs it, and we share it with them. That's what the community is all about. And our call in these days is to spread it, to share it outside of just our community, outside of just our homes, but to share that there is hope to be had in these days. Paul, Paul might be an example for us. Paul is on his way to Rome. He's in the midst of his travels through the Mediterranean, and he finds himself in the Areopagus. This picture on the screen is a picture of the Areopagus. The Areopagus was a portion of the center of town in Athens that was used for the gathering of the elders of Athens. Indeed, the Areopagus will come to mean that community that gathered, but it's also a place right here, sort of in the shadow of the Parthenon. And what Paul says in those times is that he proclaims God. He proclaims God in Christ, no less, to a people that were still worshiping a whole pantheon of gods. But what he does is he uses the times and the things that the Athenians would understand. I walked through your center square, he said. I walked through the agora. I walked through the markets. I walked through your temple district. And I found a temple that that drew my attention. You already had it. It was already built. And the inscription was that this shrine, this altar, was dedicated to an unknown god. I'm here to tell you I know the name of that unknown god. And that unknown God is the one who created us all and comes among us in Jesus and continues to build a community of faith. But what Paul doesn't do is he doesn't step in and say, you're wrong. Don't be where you are. Come over here to this thing you don't understand. No, Paul uses what's happening all around him to explain, to make God accessible. In a lot of ways, that's what Jesus does. Jesus takes imagery that a agrarian society would know. Sheep, shepherds, seeds, sowers, mustard trees, fish. Things that people where he was would understand and uses them to make God's love and life accessible. And in that way to instill in them hope. Paul does the same thing as he travels. And here in the Areopagus says, yeah, that that temple over there, I know who it's to. You may have said that you don't know the name of that God, but I'm going to tell you, it is the one who comes among us in Jesus. And this is what it means that this is our God. That it's right, it's not by human hands. And it's probably pretty fair that that shrine probably didn't get the most uh, most attention, given that nobody really knew who that God was. But, but that's okay, because the God who comes to us in Jesus doesn't need anything from us, and yet gives us everything. 
And so in these days, as we are called by Peter, to prepare a defense, to be ready to explain why we have hope, to explain in whom we have hope. Let us take an example from Paul. Interesting that in this case, Peter and Paul have to work together. But let us take a glimpse from Paul and use the things that are around us, the signs that we see all around us, to help explain that. And yet, and yet there's that second part of Peter's exhortation. Prepare a defense of the hope that is in you, but do so with gentleness and reverence. It's not an easy time to have hope. I'd argue it never has been an easy time to have hope, but it's not an easy time to have hope. And so as we are called to proclaim the reason that we have hope and the one in whom we have hope, we need to understand that there are many around us who are having a hard time finding it. And so as we share of the hope that is in us, we should do so meeting people where they are, understanding, not asking them to step farther than they are able to step in this time, not asking them to reach for something unattainable, but just in this moment, even if it's just in the conversation you're having, to see hope, to feel hope. Because we have it, it is guaranteed us, and Peter assumes that we have it. It's a promise from God. It's sealed on us with, by Christ. It is welling up in us with the spirit that fills us. And so as we are called to then live in the world sharing that hope, we are called to do so meeting people where and how they most need it, to hear it, to grasp it, to feel it, to experience it. And together, together we begin to see even more glimpses of the inbreaking of God all around us and are able to put a name to that unknown God for all that God has done for us, for all that Christ continues to do for us, and for the story and the hope we are called to share. Thanks be to God. Amen. Peace to soothe our bitter woes, God in Christ on us bestows, Jesus bought our peace with God, with his holy precious blood, peace in him for sinners found, is the gospel's holy sound. Peace within the church still dwells in our welcomes and farewells, and through God's baptismal power, peace surrounds our dying hour. Peace be with you, full and free, now and through eternity. Siblings in Christ, wherever we are, let us confess the faith in which we are baptized. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With the whole people of God who find hope in Christ Jesus, we pray for the Church, those in need, and all of God's good creation. We will share a bidding prayer. I will open us, and I invite you wherever you are to share your prayers for that. Holy God, your mercy extends beyond the farthest star and into every human heart. We pray for the church universal, for its ministries, for its leaders, for the mission of the gospel in the world today.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have written the resurrection on every bud of springtime, and all around us we see your goodness. We pray for the well-being of creation and for our role as stewards of it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You give us hope in every time, and you are the hope of the hopeless. We pray for peace and justice in the world, for the nations and those who lead, for those who run for office in this country, and for those who must make difficult decisions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have no justice. We pray for the poor and oppressed, the underhoused and the underemployed, the hungry, those who do not have equal access to resources. We pray for those who, whose jobs are deemed essential and for those who every day put themselves in harm's way on behalf of others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The healing of our bodies, the healing of our spirits, the healing of our world is found in you, O oh God. We pray for all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer as we hear of the hope we find in your beloved community, we lament that we cannot meet together. We yearn to be together in your body, to be together in person, and yet are drawn to show love for neighbor by being apart. We pray for this community of faith and for all the church that now lives in diaspora, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your gifts of science and medicine have never been needed more in our world, O oh God. We beg you for a vaccine. Open the minds of scientists and researchers. Give patience and perseverance to doctors and healthcare workers. And through it all, give us what we need, O oh God that the world might know healing and wholeness in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks for all who have died, those whose faith is an example to us and those whose faith was known only to you. Bring us with them to the joy of your feast. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your wounded hands of love, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in the mercy that we know in Jesus Christ, the crucified and risen one. Amen. My siblings, the peace of Christ be with you. As always, I invite you as we give thanks for God's work among us and for the hope that we find in this community to consider the ways you are called to continue to support our ministry here at Christ Ascension. You may do so either electronically, christascension.org forward slash donate, or you may send a physical check here to the church office. Be not afraid, sing out for joy, Christ is risen, alleluia. Be not afraid, sing out for joy, Christ is risen, alleluia. Be not afraid, sing out for joy, Christ is risen, alleluia. Be not afraid, sing out for joy, 
Christ is risen, alleluia. Be not afraid, sing out for joy. Christ is risen, alleluia. Be not afraid, sing out for joy. Christ is risen, alleluia. Praise and thanks to you, holy God. For by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts. Freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. A few announcements for you as we continue on our way. The first is that we will gather this Thursday, the 21st of May, at 7 p.m. for Ascension Day worship. This is our traditional name day that we give thanks for and celebrate on. Uh, given the style of worship and the timing Zoom will be the only option for this worship service. Worship leaders are always needed and welcomed. If you would like to share reading or music or prayers, please let me know. Send me an email. The weekly news comes out on Mondays by 2 p.m., uh, and that will have a week at a glance for you, things that are going on that week, as well as links to ministry that we continue to do around Christ Ascension and anything else you might need to know. Throughout the week, you will receive emails with links for things like Bible study or Zoom worship or worship on Sunday. Those invitations come out on the days of the events uh, that they take place for. We uh, invite you, as always, to continue to keep supporting our ministry here in the ministry of our partners. More information about that is in the weekly news. One way, uh, specifically in this time, that you can uh, support our ministry as the church continues her work in the world is to support the candidacy fund here at Christ Ascension. Uh, Kyle Scheifelbein Guerrero is the professor of liturgy at the seminary and a member here at Christ Ascension. He is entering candidacy for Ministry of Word and Sacrament. And part of our call as a congregation is to uplift and support candidates for ministry. We need to raise about $650 for our portion of his candidacy fees to support his work as he grows into that leadership ministry. You may either send a donation directly to the church uh, on a check, in which case put KSG candidacy in the memo line, or you can give online. ChristAscension.org forward slash donate has a drop down menu, uh, and one of the options is candidacy fund. That money will go there. If you have uh, any questions or any um, anything you'd like to share about this, please be sure you contact me. Bible study continues on Wednesdays at 7 p.m., and as I said, that link will come out on Wednesday. I've begun holding office hours on Zoom, uh, Mondays from 9 to 11 and Wednesdays from 5 to 7. 
What that means is I sit in my personal meeting room. Uh, that link is in the e-news on Monday mornings. You can use the same link from Monday and Wednesday. Um, I sit there and wait. And if you have a need or just want to chat, if you click on that link, it'll bring you into the, to the group and I will be able to have a conversation with you via video chat. Or if you need to call in via phone, uh, we can do it that way as well. It'll still bring you in there. These office hours, though they are on Zoom, are individual, which means if you log in and you have to wait uh, and you're waiting in the waiting room, it's not that I'm not there, it's that I might be in talking with someone else. When they leave, then it's your turn. Uh, and that's how, how that works. That's what those waiting rooms are for. And finally, please let me know if you have been attending our worship services. I'm trying to keep track as best I can of what attendance looks like in our day now that everything is electronic. Uh, and to help me with that, I can see how many computers log in. But if there's more than one of you, or if you came and, and left and came back to this pre-recorded worship, uh, just let me know how many folks are participating in worship on your end of the screen. As always, if you have any announcements or anything you would like the congregation to know, please let me know by Sunday afternoon so that I'm sure I can get it into the e-news on Monday. And now, as we've been apart, we bless each other. May the Lord watch between me and you while we are absent one from another. And may the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Gotta find my right hand bell. Now all the vault of heaven resounds in praise of love that still abounds. Christ has triumphed, he is living. Sing choirs of angels loud and clear. Repeat their song of glory here. Christ has triumphed, he is living. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Eternal is the gift he brings, therefore our heart with rapture sings. Christ has triumphed, he is living, now still he comes to give us life, and by his presence stills all strife. Christ has triumphed, he is living, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. Oh, fill us, Lord, with dauntless love, set heart and will on things above, that we conquer through your triumph, grant grace sufficient for life's day, that by our lives we truly say, Christ has triumphed, he is living. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Adoring praises now we bring, and with the heavenly blessed sing, Christ has triumphed, alleluia, be to the Father and our Lord, to Spirit blessed most holy God, all the glory never ending, alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. Go in peace, share the good news, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia. As always, my friends, it is a joy to gather with you, even electronically, as we continue our celebration of the resurrection and worship our God in whom we have hope. May you be blessed in the coming week.